We want to take you now to Baltimore, where the Maryland state attorney is holding a news conference about prosecutors dropping charges against Anand Syed. His case was featured on the popular serial podcast. Let's listen. These shoes. And most compellingly, Adnan Saeed, his DNA was excluded. My office received notice of these results on Friday. This morning, I personally reached out to the victim's attorney to inform Ms. Lee's family of the DNA findings and my decision to dismiss the case. We attempted to wait for confirmation of notice before releasing anything publicly, but we still, at this point, have not heard back from that attorney. As we communicated to the family before, we stand ready and willing to provide whatever counseling or support services that may be needed for that family who has had to relive an unimaginable nightmare over and over again. Equally heartbreaking is the pain and the sacrifice and the trauma that has been imposed not just on that family, but Adnan and his family, who together spent 23 years in prison for a crime as a result of a wrongful conviction. The fundaments of the criminal justice system should be based on fair and just prosecution. And the crux of the matter is that we are standing here today because that wasn't done 23 years ago. Although my administration was not responsible for neither the pain inflicted upon Heyman Lee's family, nor was my administration responsible for the wrongful conviction of Mr. Saeed as a representative of the institution, it is my responsibility to acknowledge and to apologize to the family of Heyman Lee and Adnan Saeed. As the administrator of the criminal justice system, it's my duty to ensure that justice is not delayed, justice is never denied, but justice be done. Today, justice is done. And that means today, tomorrow, and until my administration ends, we will continue to utilize every available resource to prosecute whoever is responsible for the death of Hey Min Lee. Because this is an open and pending investigation, we will not be disclosing anything else at this time. But I want to thank my team of hardworking, committed, best and brightest attorneys in the country. But I especially want to thank Becky Feldman from the bottom of my heart, who worked so hard on this case and every day works hard to ensure equality and justice, even for those that society doesn't care to remember actually exist. Thank you for heading one of the only sentencing review units out of a state's attorney's office in the country. We're here to take any questions. Madam State's Attorney, is he completely free or is there an appeal still hanging over his head? I've utilized my power and discretion to dismiss the case. There's no more appeal. It's moot. So th that appeal just goes away? The case is over. The case is over. The case is over. He the court is special appeal. Again. He cannot. And he, I understand that he's off of house arrest. He should be. He should be. It's a matter of the courts and how they, their procedures, but yes. What about the DNA of another suspect? Where is It's that? still an open and pending investigation. Do you, do you have to formally certify his innocence for him to so, receive benefits under the Low Max Act? It's actually a certification process has to go into place, and the defense attorneys, we will work with them as we did in this case to ensure that that process is, is done. Um, was DNA, was the DNA that process that was used this time, something that wasn't available years ago? Yes. It's actually touch DNA, and, and touch DNA analyzes the skin cells left behind on evidence at a crime scene, and has been available since about 2003, as you know. This case was originally prosecuted in 1999. So because of the advances in DNA, we were able to um, extract DNA from, from her shoes. So do you have all of the DNA back now? Again, 
It's still an open and pending case, but with regard to Adnan Saeed, the case is finished. Are you still looking at those alternative suspects that were mentioned when you vacated the... I can tell you that, yes, the, the case is still an open and pending investigation. Can you yeah, believe that? how close you are to, like, uh, you know, all the alternative suspects? I, I can't, but I, I'm going to put every power and resource at my, you know, means to ensure justice for Heyman Lee. The Lee family says that they, they learned about this in the media and that they weren't in contact. So what do you say? I don't know what to tell you. I have email that shows um, that we reached out to him. Um, we can't go directly to the family as we did before. As you're aware, we reached out to the, the brother of Heyman Lee before. We spoke directly with him. We provided and asked him for, you know, if he needed counseling services. We gave and provided a cell phone. Um, numbers, detective information. We gave him a copy of the motion before we filed it. We even arranged for him to appear by Zoom because the case was set in by the courts at such a, a quick, it, it quickly. But if you knew on Friday, why didn't you let the family know on Friday? Because it had to be set in. It had to be set in. We didn't know whether or not we had the ability. You have to get the approval of the court to be able to set it in for dismissal. So as soon as that was done, that's when we gave the call to, to the Heyman Lee family. Well, what do you family. say about the whole process with the Lee family? They, they think they've been left out of this process. I think it's unfortunate that, you know, you have certain attorneys that try to exploit families. And so I think that's what's happening in this case. I have evidence and proof that we reached out to the family. We've done that on every occasion, and we have to go through that attorney as opposed to speaking with that family directly. I guess just along those lines, why <laughs> Mr. Syed was set to be in court next week, why not wait to hear back from the attorney and then enter the null process at that time? Justice delayed is justice denied. He was already, he was already out. He's on home detention. detention. We know that his DNA evidence is, is not a part of this case. It's exculpatory. Why would I wait just so that I could appease someone who doesn't appear to be, and I'm not talking about the family, but the attorney in the case doesn't appear to be appeased? Is Mr. Saeed, is he eligible for some kind of compensation for wrongful conviction and incarceration? After he goes through the certification process and he is deemed actually innocent. And that's something that has to start and is initiated by the... the A very the interesting news uh, conference there. The uh, officials in Baltimore, Maryland, discussing the decision to drop all charges against Anand Syed. They say the case is over. He spent 23 years in prison for murder. But last month, his conviction was thrown out. And the state's attorney says that it received new DNA evidence that cleared Saeed from the murder. And you'll remember that prosecutors were saying maybe they would take back up his trial mm -hmm. when he was initially released. This is really that step, that final step that does give somebody who, you know, has been released the sleeping at night. Um, she also said her office was heartbroken for the victim, said her office will provide her family any services that they may need. But she said this outcome is correct, that justice has been done, and as Lana said, that the case is over. For more on all this, let's bring in Jessica Levinson. She's a CBS News legal contributor and professor at Loyola Law School. Uh, Jessica, so the conviction was overturned earlier this year, but prosecutors then said, well, maybe we will retry the case. Um, we heard from the attorney general saying that the case is over, that she believes in justice over convictions. Um, why did prosecutors ultimately decide that Syed was innocent? So I think there were a number of steps. As you mentioned, last month, a judge granted the prosecutor's motion to vacate the conviction. And they did that because they had undergone a months long investigation into the original conviction. And they found that there were basically two big problems. One of the problems was that there were other suspects that were not turned over. Evidence about them was not turned over to the defense. That's evidence that absolutely under the law has to be given to the defense. One of the suspects, I believe, was convicted of sexual assault and even rape. Another one of the suspects, the statement indicates, said something like, I'm going to kill her uh, regarding Lee. And so that evidence is evidence, obviously, the defense would have wanted to present at trial to say, 
they can't prove prove they can't prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt because there are other people out there who the prosecutors haven't looked at. The other bit of evidence was there was some unreliability based on the cell phone data, trying to place Saeed at a certain time, at a certain place, that he had actually been the one to dig the hole. And so that was the point where the prosecutor said, we're worried about the integrity of the conviction. Then they had 30 days basically to wait for this DNA evidence that you heard the prosecutor talk about, where she said, it, we've now found with the new technology that has been in place since 2003, after the conviction, that the DNA indicates that he wasn't there basically. And that's why they're going from, we want a motion to vacate the conviction to we actually think he's innocent. You know, Jessica, this was such a high profile case and there are so many people who don't have a yes. Sarah Koenig, who don't have the, you know, the, the most famous podcast ever made behind them and, you know, who are innocent in prison and spend their lives there and die there. There has to be a consequence. Adnan Syed spent 23 years. It could have been his whole life. Does he have any recourse? I mean, against the city, against prosecutors, what comes next? So potentially, and you heard that discussed at the very end of the press conference where the prosecutor said basically, first he has to be deemed innocent and then he can go forward. And I believe it would be bring a case for basically civil damages for money based on his wrongful conviction. Now, of course, you never get those years back. Yeah. So yes, he could get some sort of monetary remedy, but it will never make him whole. And that's frankly why the work that these innocent projects do, yeah. sometimes they're called Project for the Innocent, sometimes it's called the Innocent Project, but that they do to help prosecutors do what they did here, which is say, we need to take another look at the evidence. That's why that work is so vital. Yeah, um, and obviously for, since actually the very beginning of this trial, Asayad uh, and, his, and his proponents have said that He's the wrong man. He should be released. Um, it is, it's worth noting, though, that Heyman Lee's family is also struggling in all of this because they, yeah. they lost uh, a sister, a daughter. Yeah. Um, for them, and we heard also some of that happening in that press conference right now, do we know where the investigation goes from here to try and actually get real justice for the person who took her life? It's a really good question. And what I heard the prosecutor say is basically there's an open investigation. There are those two suspects that should have been turned over to the defense all those years ago, 23 years ago. And what I heard the prosecutor say is we can't comment on an ongoing investigation. So the truth is we have no idea where in the process they are in terms of ruling in or ruling out those two individuals. We don't know if charges will be brought. Obviously, there are so many reasons practically and legally why it is difficult to bring charges more than two decades later. But for the family, you know, they have said, and this makes all the sense in the world on a human level, we thought that this tragedy was not behind us in the sense that you ever forget, but yeah. legally we thought the case was closed. And this opens that trauma up for them yet again. Yeah, that's something you hear. It's it's not the main story oftentimes when it comes to Innocence Project uh, you know, cases, but it's true. It's true. They thought they had justice. They don't any longer. Yeah. Jessica, thank you so much. All right, well, we're going to take a quick break. We've got a lot more news ahead. You're streaming CBS News always on.